the thing about Asian countries... Oh, is, dude, I hate... I'm sorry, Mac. Go ahead. I hate when technology does this to me. It waits to... All right, so Tumblr... I used to... I, I really like the Tumblr app on my phone. It's a really good, seamless app for tumbling that I really enjoy. And all of a sudden... Like, they waited until I induced psychedelics into my body to update it and completely change the interface. So I'm just like, why? Why do you wait until this moment? I just get really mad at people when they try to fix things that aren't broken. But I guess that's how we ended up here. Like, what is this? How am I supposed to navigate all these? Oh, that looks very, uh... <laughs> this looks that awful, looks very, That it? looks very modern. Yeah, it's super... I see you've got imaginary foundation art prints on there. Okay, so this is just... I don't even know what this icon means. There's no... No, that means... Uh, okay, so edit. this is the home. No, this that's, is the, the, that's the tag icon. This is the dashboard? Yeah. Okay, so this is the tag. So I can look up, like... Tags. Okay. Just so we're clarifying that this is what this does. Workaholics. Wow, you're right. That's just... God, that's so bad. Why would you need that on your phone? Yeah, what they should have done was made that a magnifying glass because people don't think of it as much. Yeah, as because they have it. They have it on the the website as a magnifying glass. Do they? Yeah. When, I mean, when, I, when I think of it, all, I, I do see tags dot dot dot. Yeah, it's like beside it when you track them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm still just disagreeing with the saying that you know design wise they should have picked the tag because nobody knows what the tag symbol actually means. They they definitely modernize the uh, the way you post. Yeah, it's just like don't know if I like that or not. It used to be not, all not like, necessary. It used to all be like Tumblr-y, and now it's just like a generic no, smartphone no, thing. No, okay, I see. Yeah, like it's, it looks it's like an, an Android. It looks like an an app got designed for doing this. Yeah. I also like the quality of being similar to the website and not being like a a, a new completely interface. different thing. Yeah, I like that too. That's why I think Spotify is so good is because, like, all these tabs say what they are underneath them. Nah. Like, oh, you want to search for music? Here's all the playlists you've already stored. Here's the whole new thing we got going on called radio. and uh, mm, the, the new thing called radio. <laughs> it's a, it's, is it good? It's really good. Like, okay, you can just pick a song. Okay, so I can go to my yeah, playlist. I have, I've I've noticed sl slasher about this. You can you pick a song and it makes a radio station that's yeah. Okay, so know, that's actually good. And then you that's can just that song. start radio, <laughs> and then you're just you're in there, and it's just like okay, Counting Crows one of my favorite bands. Start radio, and it just goes, and it's just like thumbs up, thumbs down, just like Pandora, except they're doing it better. Right. <laughs> And then, like, the thing about Spotify is it's also yeah, extremely that, that social. App, that app is designed perfectly, pretty much, right now. Yeah, and it's, like, social, too, because you can inbox people songs. Like, I have songs in my inbox right now. Right. It's properly social. It's not trying to be social. Yeah, it's not, like, in your face with yeah. it, but it's just, like... Now we're social. Oh. It's just, it's not its own thing. It's synced with Facebook. So you can just, like, send things to people that are already on your Facebook friends list. Right. And you don't have to have your own thing, like, you don't have to have a separate list of people for, on a separate website doing a separate thing. It's just like, everybody already has, or should have Spotify, simply because, one, everyone likes to listen to music, two, everybody has Facebook. Mm. <laughs> so there's no reason to not have Spotify. Right. It's Except just, for people in Bhutan. Yeah, if people in Bhutan don't need Spotify. <laughs> I guess. But they also don't need soft serve ice cream at mm. night. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> so basically, I guess where this night is actually, going is I wasn't thinking of soft serve. I was thinking of hard serve. Oh, okay. That's that was the, what the problem was. Oh wow! Well, you can just get that anywhere. You can go to CVS and get that. Oh, you're right too. Because they have just like mountains of Ben and Jerry's there. Oh yeah. There. All right. You know, honestly. Cities did solve that problem, okay. Yeah. You can go anywhere and get hard ice cream. Hard ice cream. If you don't have it in your own house for some reason. <laughs> you you ran out for that moment. 
Because I know you're eating ice cream every night. Every night. I do. I don't. I, I, don't. I really like ice cream. I mean, I think that I'm starting to get more in touch with the idea what? of eating things that are colder or room temperature. Because I just don't like eating things that are really hot. And the more I think about it, the more I'm just like, yeah, I'll cook this and wait for it to get to room temperature before I eat it. And it's just like... Things are better that way. Or maybe things that are already in that state that are meant to be in that state are just super good, like ice cream. Right. Ice cream's just meant to be frozen forever. <laughs> like, why is it... <sighs> why isn't there just someone who just designed an ice cream format that had all the supplements and dietary <laughs> nutritions you need from a meal? And then you would just have a freezer full of different flavors of ice cream that would just be meals. And you wouldn't need to eat anything else. <laughs> I, I, I thought of that too, nutrition-wise. Wouldn't it be so economical? And like... Oh, no, man. It's frozen, Actually, Mac. Huh? It's frozen. Like, it doesn't get much safer than that. Ice cream is unhealthy for you in excess. But if you could just design an ice cream right, right, that right. is perfectly safe, not only to eat every meal for every day, but had all the dietary uh -huh. supplement of what you would be eating, like, if you had a good, balanced diet, Right. then why wouldn't you? Like, if it was all packaged in ice cream. Because the reason people don't go and get four servings of fruit a day and nine servings of vegetables is because you have to go do so many separate things to get those, and we don't have time, we're just... I don't have time to go get yeah, celery yeah. and then get tomatoes later. Right. Like, yeah, I've, I've thought of that. But if, that's and, what, I guess that's uh, what V8 is trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegetable-wise, for sure. And yeah. they're trying to make it in the fruit department, but no, nobody's... No, no one's, no one's buying that. Like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, that only works with vegetables. You're you do idiot, know that. You're an idiot, V8. <laughs> like, why can't you just take the no, Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm still following the ice cream idea. I actually like it. We're still going. We're and, going. And uh, if... if, if uh, the thing about milk is that milk was designed by evolution for mammals. The, you know, mammals, what that word means is mammary glands, yeah. breasts, and milk. Yeah. That's what makes us special. And uh, just like if you, if you follow a bodybuilding, I think that all of them think that milk is just like this amazing thing that was invented that has... <laughs> that there's there's two kinds of protein in it that each cater to the deficiencies in the other type of protein so it's a full thing for any li growing being to yeah, like milk is its own thing milk is definitely its own right. metagame milk is uh it's like meat but it's sugary and it's liquid yeah most people don't think of milk as meaty but if you taste milk it tastes kind of like meat yeah it does and that's because it's made by meat. It's yeah. made in breasts, which are meat. Yeah. But anyway, with the ice cream, it's frozen. We already have systems. I mean, just make cold milk and give it to everybody. <laughs> and uh, nu nutri nutrient-wise, you would need to put in, you know, that all that's easy. The problem is fiber, I think, is the only part. But all you have to do with fiber is just give the ice cream a texture, like yeah. a like a popsicle. Yeah, I mean the ice. The, I'm thinking like an ice cream stick that you have to chew on for one meal. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, I guess kind of. Well, the whole point of fiber is like in a carrot. There's yeah. There's there's fibers. The, the fiber is yeah. strong. It's really strong, and that's what you need to. Yeah, I mean. That's, so all you, you just need to put a skeleton in the ice cream yeah, that's chewable, too. Yeah, you need to just have straight-up fiber stick. Because something I've been trying to think of... God damn it. No, I mean, the, actually, the, these ideas were in my mind, but they didn't come to... I don't know why I didn't just think ice cream. But for my whole life, I've been trying to think of like some kind of nutrient gel that you could eat instead of food okay. that would somehow be more efficient. There is a book... Uh, series that I'm really into that I was really into when I was a kid called Pendragon 
where he is, uh, Bobby Pendragon is chosen to be one of the travelers of the realms, where he can travel in between the different universes and parallel timelines of that universe. And one of the universes he visits is this universe called Velox that was much like our society, and they developed heightened virtual reality simulation, and there was this huge pyramid built where people could go and pay a certain amount of money and be put in the virtual reality simulator for a little while, and they would come out and go in and just go about their lives. And another thing that was invented alongside of it was this crazy gel that could be eaten just straight up, or it could just be osmos <laughs> in the body. All it, right. had a, it, it could be processed with a tube to osmos into your body. And people who paid for like year-long visits or year-long stays in the virtual reality system would just get it osmosed into their body for a year. And then they'd have another thing that just got all the waste out of their body. It was just like, okay, well that was really efficient, and that worked for like hundreds of years, and then all of a sudden everyone just preferred being in the virtual reality state, and then that's when society started collapsing. And I was just like, oh, I bet all of this started, not because of the virtual reality thing, but because of the food thing. <laughs> I bet that's where it started. Because the efficiency of that is good. It's almost too... Like, food is the most important thing in the world. Yeah, food, food and reality are very... The same thing. They're also counter... They're also, like... One of those things that will bring you back to reality. Yeah. Like, you've just severely experienced something traumatic. You should probably eat. No. <laughs> or, or, like you go through something really traumatic and you just throw up as a response to like getting hit really hard or something like that and it's just like you throw up and it empties out your stomach and then you're just like fuck I need to eat like back when I played football that was like the thing that they kept like shoving down our throats like you eat right before the game and you eat right after the game you just do a lot of physical exertion and like then you just like intake and it was just like it just condenses you back into the human condition from rea from like something high impact or high stress or like that's another thing that uh, my grandfather was telling me about meals in the military were <laughs> it's not that they need to put drugs or anything like that in the meals in the military they're just so awful and they're literally catered like that on purpose to just make combat seem not as traumatic. <laughs> like, it's a subconscious thing that just takes it out of your mind. Alright. I haven't <laughs> it's, thought. It's something, that, it's something that takes you from this angle of it and brings you back to the other side of it when you're done doing something crazy. And it's just... That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, it's, it's just a connection that I've made recently, actually, with eating. It's like I've always noticed that people just, people do that after something that is almost like catering into, not necessarily fantasy, but like something that is not everyday human to do. Like play a four and a half hour football game uh, where you're wearing like 50 pounds worth of equipment and you're just like hitting people and just like just impact and that's not something you experience or combat like that's not something you experience every second of every day and eating in the transitional period kind of eases you through it <laughs> mentally or psychologically I should say right and in terms of uh, literature it's always a uh thing to notice anytime you're reading anything uh, how food is handled how food is described is crazy in terms of uh, social interactions usually usually just eating will not be, will in most things just not be described as ever happening <laughs> except for when 
you know, this group of people has dinner with this group of people or whatever, and yeah. then shit goes down. <laughs> yeah. And you're, really I mean, when you're, uh, <coughs> if you have invited, you know, somebody else over to eat at your house and you're giving them food. Yeah, that's a that's crazy good thing. That's just, uh, you know, real solid reality. You're inviting them in and you're giving them food. Or the classic, like, first date scenario where the male right. pays for the female's food. Yeah, yeah. And, like, uh, provides the meal, the first interaction. Yeah, food is kind of like one of those things that I think if it wasn't so unique in every experience you've ever, like, had something different or had something new, then that would be, like, one of the first bricks of society that would just, like, if you yank that one out, then... All right. That's, like, where I draw, like, the moral gray area of, like, when food starts to become something that you do for efficiency and not for the experience Oh, yeah, yeah, anymore, yeah. I understand that idea. It's, like, that's when we're starting to get to over the... Virtual reality? Yeah, yeah. What is that? The Silicon Valley? The Silicon Valley? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, 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 yeah. This, I know exactly. This, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With with people and robots. Yeah, that's where of. we're going over the hill. Not, not as much robots as... Things that are things that were appear human. Yeah, right? thing, thing, yeah <laughs> things that were designed artificially that, that are to appear biological. Yeah. Or like they're part of our reality. The closer something is to selling you on the illusion... And the, the smaller the thing is that makes you realize that it's an illusion, right. the more serious it is. You're right. just like, fuck. All right. you're, you're right, too. I almost got conned. Like, I almost believed you for a second. My entire concept of reality it's may shattered. be under question. Yeah, exactly. May be under question. Exactly right, sir. And yeah. that is a personal thing that you are now going to go through. Yeah. That's a crazy thing to experience, I imagine. You can't just talk to... You can't just tell the person you're next to about that. No. <laughs> because they're not going to have the same thing going on. Or they could even, in your mind, be an android. Yeah. And therefore... Yeah. That, right. And what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? You talk to your psychonaut friend. I feel, that's like, who... I feel like that's how people become insane. Is they go down the wrong path of... Not talking to the right people about just a concept in their mind that just shattered their current reality, and they're just like they don't know how to deal with it. It's like the the shell shock of that effect. A thing I've always had with fiction is also that if basically uh, whatever you come up with fictionally. There's, there's a thing in yourself that you don't notice, but it has to do with yourself living vicariously through this fictitious through thing fictitious that you made up okay, yeah. versus are you really that good that you're going to go out and do this fictitious thing and take... You spent so much time devising, you know, all these great fictions. Why not make your life a fiction? Yeah. And so I've always had that thing going on in me. <laughs> yeah. And when I started com I, I started writing a choose your own adventure fiction novel, <laughs> and uh, uh, see where it's gotten me. Yeah, I mean that's what you were talking about. Um, in one of your videos, <laughs> you were like, uh, the best choose your own adventure novel, or the best, you know, billion dollar budget movie is the one that's happening right now right. to you. Yeah. <clears throat> are, you, are, you are you really going to go, you know, go to a virtual reality center for, and, you know, give them money that could have been food? Yeah. For when you can just do something. Right. It's, it's a, but it's how it's every moment is a sum of however committed you are to yourself. Ooh. That's good. <laughs>
and uh, if <laughs> I mean I, it, it's just it's true that not a lot of people it, most people would just want to uh, go into a more relaxed state of mind and just not do as much I just don't see how people can do it man God the more intelligent I become the harder it is for me to put on the mask and go to function in society right it's so hard when I when I went to go see the movie with you guys just that was a gigantic thing when I was watching the previews I was like people think this is real all, all of these previews to these movies and just this is this is a thing that people do and they go watch these movies and the movies are all set up a certain way that it's it in a cheap way yeah sometimes I can't do culture yeah it's just like culture is because the, the whole time it's trying to overwrite me basically and yeah. if if you're if you're really committed to yourself kind of idea <laughs> then you're already good you don't whatever is trying to overwrite you is typically going to be a lower quality experience experience or a cheaper version of who you already are yeah so why go into a consumerist culture when you could just make your own yeah i mean uh and start declaring culture from your own house that's kind of like i don't know man it's hard to work in a coffee shop <clears throat> it's hard to work anywhere where there's coffee because where there is coffee there is republicans <laughs> and like right. and i'm just like i try so hard the other day i just i told one of my managers about like the uh the the wide the widely i thought the widely accepted theory that the government is trying to implement a RF, you know, chip into everyone. Oh, okay. And that is something that, that will happen in, in, like, time. In time. Yeah, that's that something technology. that nobody knows about. That's something that I feel like I thought was just widely accepted as something that's definitely going to happen. Yeah, like, any, anybody that's thought of the idea feels like you, but nobody knows about it. Yeah, like, my, my this manager, Susan, this lady at my work, she was just, like, totally oblivious to it even being a thing. And I was like, yeah, I think that, you know, my personal theory on it is that when the government, the United States government, realizes how good the Bitcoin system is, they're just going to eradicate, slowly phase out all forms of U.S. currency and create a new form of currency that is monitored through the chip. Right. And if somebody doesn't do something that, you know, the government doesn't care for, you just cut it off. Yeah. Or turn it all the way up and track them with it <laughs> yeah or put limitations on it which is mainly yeah what but they're the way do. they would sell people on it is really good because they would be like you don't have to fill out any more w-2 forms you right. don't we'll just subtract the tax yeah at, at, at every you know day or moment that you're working the tax will just be removed cleanly yeah. you won't even think about it you won't even think about it it'll be over time nobody will even know what happened and with the the same, and, but you'll still get the big refund. Right. At the end yes. Of the year. Yes. You, the big you, tax you will refund. get a big tax refund and spend it all on whatever. Whatever you want. You, want. <laughs> you will splurge on something because all that of is. that money will also be taxed. Yes, unless you take that money and take it to the outside. Right. Which is what I have noticed my friends doing with their tax refunds. Which I'm just like, yeah, cool guys. <laughs> They're just like, okay. So, we're going to take our tax refunds and make a bunch of trucks. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, cool, guys, nice. This is where you want to go. The black market yep. is where you want to go. How much the thing that controls all of our lives or tries to regu regulate all of our actions says that everything you can do on this one website is just like, no, we, you don't want to do that, but they can't stop it from happening. <laughs> and they want more than anything to shut it down. And they can. And it's like... Why the best people... they can do is just to never mention it. <laughs> yeah, like, why don't people realize that that's powerful? It's powerful in that. The thing about the internet is that the government had it, like, when it was first developed. And they were like, 
oh yeah, we can just we can just give this to everyone. This will this will work. This will be good. The theory. I mean, Tor was designed by the Navy. What? No. Really? Yeah, it was. I did not know that. It, it was a uh, it was a U.S. naval project uh, between submarines to make just really secure communication, and uh, it was discarded. And then I think in the late '90s, some group of hackers just picked it up because it was it was public, and they just uh, made it work. There's probably so much stuff that's just public. Yeah. Like that the government's just thrown away because I feel like the thing about the internet is that they just like were like, "All right, kids, you know, have fun," and then we got better than them at it. And right. It's like now it's just like. That was that was a big thing. Especially when they were at started, the whole concept of telephone lines. Yeah. Now we're repurposing telephone lines for something that's legitimately amazing, yeah. and that you don't, you guys don't even know what's coming that we're making right now on telephones. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things about drugs is that. Uh, the more pressure there is to ban drugs, that's how much more pressure there is to make new ones. Yeah, that's... So anytime you have... I mean, mushrooms were good enough for everybody until we started banning... Um, mushrooms, yeah. Yeah. And then we started coming up with more things. I and, just... I mean, it's chemistry, so you can... There's an infinite number of molecules. Yeah. Psychedelics are a scheduled one like they're most psychedelics are like mm -hmm. a schedule one control yeah, substance yeah. and it's just like are you serious <laughs> like it's it's uh it's very obvious when you look not even you don't even have to look under the top layer look on the top layer and it's very obvious that the government is terrified of psychedelics absolutely terrified like, it's the opposite of what government is. Yeah, it's it's the opposite of. It's the opposite of, unawareness. Right. It's the living, breathing, wake up call. It's the, the. It's just everything. It's it's everything the government is not. It. It takes the unnatural structure and shows you how unnatural it is. Here's what I say about government. Government itself is a cover story for reality being under control. Yeah. We've got true. we've got this all under control. Everything's normal. Don't worry about it. That's, that, that's what government is. That's that's when people, the space in their mind that have, where people have a psychological you know need and appreciation for that type of thing. Okay. Is that that reality? They need to be assured. Is under control. Everything is. Everything good. is. Everything is safe. Uh, it won't suddenly change on you. <coughs> but reality is not like that. And anarchism is the natural state of reality. Anytime you have government, that's just you pretending like every like it isn't what it is and that's why you end up having the contradictions build up and that's why people just start killing each other because of a causal nature in holding contradictions to be true mm. when you hold contradictions to be true you make them true and that typically involves you dying or wasting your life or something because that's because con that's contradictory. Yeah, a contradiction in nature does not exist because it's immediately resolved. Yeah, and when you try to make it true, it, something it, has to drastically. Yeah, it was either already true, and you're just like embodying it right now. Yeah. Or you're going to die right now because you thought for some reason that this thing, something was true, but right now it's you're a false. <laughs> yeah. You know this. You, if you, if you took the wrong amount of chemical, you know if if you thought you were taking ten my ten uh, milligrams and you took one gram instead, you're you're done. 
the pure it's pure causality and there's no way around it. What does causality mean? Causality means it has to do with evolution. And uh, it has to do with one thing, one card falling over and the next one falling over. Oh, domino effect. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. a domino effect I'm from... I'm familiar now. Right. Now we're... Okay. For That's example, for when you have uh, ink and you have water, ink and water are different. Yeah. Only, by, we're, only by the fact that they're different, because ink is water, which is just black, and we're going to pay attention to it because it's black. Yeah. When you drip ink into the water, from the point that it touches, because it's different, every, what time is, is how far out you're going from the point where they touch. And as that goes out, the finerness of the distinctions and all of the patterns go out to infinity. And that's what we are. Yeah. <laughs> I've had this exact uh, thought, realization uh, of sorts once, but it was not with ink or water. It was just something that happened on one of the days that I accidentally went into word tripping. And it was like there was tomato soup and broccoli soup and broccoli soup is yellow and thick and tomato soup is really thin and just just red and I dropped the a bit of the tomato soup in the broccoli soup and just like that when they fractaled out I was just like <laughs> and I was just like oh okay <laughs> and it's just like that is what radical change is like that is it is either going to like when you drip the ink into the glass it's either going to become like you know the color of the ink or the water will just dissolve it and it will be slightly changed but it'll still be water right i mean if when the ink hits the surface it yeah. could just go straight down and in a mathematically perfect world, it would. It the, would. The drop of ink would just keep going down and hit the bottom. But it's almost like atmospheric. But there, there is some infinitesimally small something that's not exactly right, and that's what causes the, you know, yeah, that's the everything. Yeah, the effect. Yeah. And you and you might think of the beginning being clear water, and the ending being okay. Now the water is dark. Yeah. But if you were to zoom in on each little fractal in there, that drip of water is start, is happening for the first time at every zoom in. Yeah. So it's not like we have an absolute glass of water. Now it's starting. Because every single time you look in, it's starting right now. Every second, it's happening. That's a good that's a good thought to have, I think. I'm very okay with that. Yeah, I mean <laughs> psychologically, the whole thing about wanting to relax and, you know, government and that kind of thing and you know, going to see movies that do not require you to live yourself. Yeah. All all of these ideas. Actually, if you think about it, about what reality is like, you're going to be okay with it too, because it's just what I said, and that's cooler, <laughs> and it, it doesn't require you to, you know, you're not going to have any, it's not going to make you have any more problems than you've already been having for your entire life. You have to eat all the time. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's just what you've been doing all the time. It's not going to be new, it's just going to be how you're going to look at it. It's not, yeah. like any, it's not like anything would be different at all if suddenly we had no laws. Because the people that you hung out with today 
would still either be nice to you or be a fucking jerk to you or whatever. When we drive on the roads, we you could imagine, oh, somebody might just want to kill everybody. But every day we drive on roads, and there are a lot of massacres by accident, but I've been driving on roads for a long time, and I've never bumped into, I've never so much bumped into another car. Most of the time, nobody wants to hurt anybody else. Yeah. Pe that's just too much to deal with. Like, it's hard it's enough. It's 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 hard enough <laughs> mentally to uh, go from being okay right now to being involved in a confrontation. Yeah. Most people don't want to do that at all. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what that's that's what natural government is. <laughs> my, yeah. And that's what natural law means. That's what yeah. When people okay. talk about natural law. That's good. That's really good. I think that I've just become more uncomfortable with unnatural law. <laughs> like a lot more lately. Like when my car got broken into, you remember that? Like when my car got broken yeah. into a couple months ago, I just didn't file a police report, not because I was doing anything illicit, I was just like, any interaction with the police at all is just not... <laughs> How are they gonna, are they gonna get your stuff back? Yeah, anyway? Mean, no? no? And what did you lose? Oh, you, well, no. you, oh. All it would gain me is I could get a deductible from the insurance company that would allow me oh. to, you know, okay. fix the damages to my I car. See. But, I was just like, any interaction with the police at all is just not what I want to do. I don't want to support any kind of salary. I right. don't want to give them any of my time. Yeah. There are so many things in history that are just super interesting that, like, have a lot of good events around them. Like, presidential assassinations are a very fun thing to talk Always. about. Because you've got Abraham Lincoln, who was just a powerhouse icon of the, you know, just government. <laughs> like, this is... Dude, he did everything. He did, he did. Every government <laughs> thing. Check, 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 check. Yeah, every government thing that happened yeah. after the Constitution and before this recession that we're in. Right. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. He, he, he started it. Started it with vampire slaying, actually, <laughs> and then worked his way to freeing the slaves. Precisely. Um, but... Yeah, he, he, I mean, he just got shot by, he, he got shot in the back He, he of the had head. to be killed by he, the... <laughs> the most photographed man of his time. Yes. <laughs> like, I was, we just talked about this the other day. Mm -hmm. I was like, what if, what if, like, an A-list celebrity like Robert Downey Jr. just decided it was time to kill the president? <laughs> like, just woke up one day and he was like, not today. <laughs> and it would be like its own movie. Like, why isn't there a John Wilkes Booth movie? There are so many good Kennedy assassination theories that it's almost, like, fun in pop culture to talk about the Kennedy assassination. Like in Watchmen. In Watchmen, there is right, an yeah. illusion that the comedian is the man on the grassy knoll. Which is really good considering Watchmen as a movie. <laughs> when you understand it. When you understand Watchmen as a book, when you understand the philosophy of the Watchmen, that's just like too good. <laughs> that uh oh man, what's another good one? Oh that guy that um who was it, Nixon? Nixon that got shot but lived? No. Garfield? Garfield, maybe. Yeah. Or you mean Teddy Roosevelt? I mean, um, it was recorded. The assassination of Ronald Kennedy. Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Was shot and lived. Was shot. Or like shot and missed or something, but it was recorded. Yeah, it was recorded. That was the only one that's been recorded, except for JFK. And JFK, yeah. Reagan's a very interesting president. Right, definitely. He is the, uh, Kind of like even on the surface from like the outside point of view of like a different country talking about our presidents. He is like, what? Like he's kind of like a, 
okay, he was an actor, and then he became president. It's just like, wow, he can really do anything in America. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can do it all, man, truly. Most of the money that came out of, that came for the revolution was all in smuggling liquor through and sugar and tea, which are all drugs. Yeah. And the whole mission to America was started uh, so they could grow tobacco there, which is another drug. Yeah. And uh, all of the founding fathers all had uh, plantations where they all grew hemp. And that was how they made money. So this is this is just like all of them. That's every drug that they knew about. And they were all just making money off of it. That's great. See, like, being a science teacher is easier than if I was to be, like, a history teacher. I I wouldn't know what I would I where to not say things. Yeah. Because I would just get stopped. Yeah. Like ima- imagine if I had that lesson today and I just like said it in like two minutes. I could be fired over just saying that. Yeah. And I was being told it's inappropriate, even though it was actually. It, the Fact. essence of everything that happened uh, economically. Yeah, these are factual statements. Guys. Not not only not only just facts, but that's where the money came from. Period, for all of these things. So if you start at true history, you're fired immediately. Yeah. You ha- you have to give something that is less tape less content. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like empty space. That would be. That's why school feels like empty space. You sit and. Western civilization is trying to erase the Holocaust from textbooks. Like currently, that's a thing that is. The survivors of the Holocaust are still alive, and they're already trying to get it out of the educational system as being a thing that should be talked about, and that is a huge, deal, that's like. The educational system is just really brazen about it. They're just like, it's too horrendous to talk about. Right. It's just too awful. And it's, we'll just talk about the German invasion and then move on. It's just like, no, you can't just do that. It was a really horrible thing that you need to take the time out of and appreciate how awful it truly was. And the magnitude of the atrocities that occurred at this juncture in time to implement some kind of moral fiber in these young minds. <laughs> but, um, I guess that's just not important anymore. Well, one, really one, of, one of the things I say about the quality of schooling in general is... Whatever topic we're talking about, if your mind uh, has figured out how to apprehend it as serious as it is, like yeah. science, let's tell children about what humans have figured out about science. You know, it's, it's kind of important. Yeah. Most teachers, A, don't understand any of it. They just went through school themselves, and uh, they're just... They, they, they couldn't. They couldn't come up with these things themselves. themselves. They're just trained to remember according and to repeat. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's your first problem. Your teachers don't actually can't actually create the things that they're trying to tell you are real. Well, uh, Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman says, "If I cannot create it, I do not understand it." Right. That was good. That's definite. And he was a teacher. Yeah, he was. He's famous for being one of the best physics teachers of all time. Yeah. I feel like if you can't do an experiment with things that you're familiar with, then you didn't understand it either. Yeah. Like, when you go into a physics lab, if you're a, if you're a new student that doesn't know anything about physics or whatever, you get given all this specialized equipment 
that is not from your concept of reality and you're told now this is going to be described what reality is like when it's clear that you have a lot of specific machines and tools that have you know been invented so as to get this you know perfect understanding that is just too dry and mathematical for you to be interested in at all but really if you were into doing physics experiments what you would probably do is look at computers see how they work because every student is involved in the computer all the time yeah. basically and uh, just start there start with what they have all of the time and teach them how that works and but we're not going factually it's all about how you approach everything yeah so the specific fact just happens to be the topic when we're really learning about how to think which is why science is so which is the big thing in science because what science is it's just a way of thinking yeah and the way it's always taught is a, a set of a set method. of yeah a set of facts that we figured out yeah and this set of facts is better than all the religious set of facts and just know that science is the last word everybody everybody knows that everybody knows if science proved it we're good <laughs> science proved sci it, man. i mean science versus religion Simon. <laughs> yeah. When when honestly, you know, religion is just as not religion as science is not science. Science is like pure curiosity and uh, a way of thinking that has been self-aware of thinking so as to make thinking better. And uh, religion, similarly, is just spirituality in a personal sense and if you can go into your mcdonald's church every sunday and uh you know get what you pay for and go back to your movies at home or whatever then you know your idea of religion isn't what religion is real religion actually means going on a spiritual journey that's what science means but the whole thing is about how committed you are to yourself. If you're really going to do it, or if you're going to just do a little bit less, whatever you're comfortable with. When that's, that question is the ultimate existential question with people all together. I mean, that's kind of what you or your thing is, right? That's kind of like what you were talking about when you say that like your philosophy in that regard is to live every moment for yourself. Right. Just clarify. Yeah. I mean, but it's it's all it's natural that not everybody will do that. Yeah, I mean And don't expect somebody to do something that they aren't. I feel like I don't know. I feel like everyone feels like they're waiting for something to like find what they're naturally just good at. Like, you know Waiting what do you mean? Waiting for like like an, an event or another person or No no no. It could be another person, like, you know, uh, a relationship that forms or a friendship that forms or a talent that they like develop. Uh, or or something that they find interest in randomly and they get really into it. It's like everybody is looking for that thing that they are naturally just really good at right? so that they can base the rest of their lives on being about it, but it's kind of like the wrong... Yeah. Their way of it is kind of like the wrong way because that's kind of like how it should be, but it's like right. kind of going about it the wrong way. That is that is the way you would think about it if you had not been doing it. Yeah, I guess so. Because your special talent is in the fact that you can do things. So just do something, and you're already on the right track. Yeah. 
if you haven't done anything, you'll naturally think, oh, there's probably some hidden talent within me that I'll just never find. That I'll just unlock randomly. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, if you do find it, you know, you should have been doing it. It's, you know, you were the chosen one, basically. All along. Yeah, that you're, you're just the best in the world at this thing, and you, you know, you didn't have to do anything. Yeah. It's the same thing as, uh, it's more common with girls, I think, but just a, a phrase or a way of thinking that is just like, when will the perfect person come into my life? Okay. You know, the, the person that is for me, the special one that I can have that's really good and just understands me and dot 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 all of this. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. That's what you would think if you haven't been doing it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what... Which is not to say that, like, that belief is untrue or, or the, re the real truth is not as good. It's just that... That is the thing that happens. What do you mean? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you are going for? What, are you, what, what does that mean? I, was I don't understand what you said. Like... That is the thing that... What, what is the that? That being that mentality. That is something that is to be noticed. Because it kind of takes away from, like, the actual experience of potentially right. finding that okay. person. Yeah. Like, uh... I understand to some degree. I'm having trouble... If you flesh it out more, I'm sure I would be able to listen. I feel like that exact mentality that you just described happening in females happens in a lot of aspects and different things like people are just people are just waiting for that one thing that is going to be better than said things that have been ha occurring but because they're so caught up in waiting for this one thing they completely undersell all of their other experiences that are currently happening to them at this current moment that could potentially be amazing because like oh man this would be perfect if only this one thing was different. And it's just, I, I, I just don't understand it. Like, getting caught up on this one minute detail and dragging it into every aspect of your experience on Earth. And just thinking to yourself, thinking back on those moments later as they would have been so much better had I one thing that I've waited for my entire life. Right. Well, what I was going to say, or where I was going, and the same, it's the same thing I always say, and where I'm always going, but that all the times that you're thinking like that and not doing anything, you're not making yourself a person that is worthy of how good that thing you're imagining is. You're just sitting around expecting like you're good enough already. You have to be able to understand somebody. And, uh, you know, a lot of being a, a female in a pretty, a large feeling relationship is an understanding each other. And that's something that is, that takes uh, self-production. I was just, um, girls, man. It's such a silly thing. It's one thing when guys get, like, that way about a thing that could happen, but girls really get that way about a person. Like, they construct this ideal person that could come into their life and be that one you were talking about. And it just not only depletes everyone around them, but it also depletes them as a person. Because like you said, they're not making themselves a person that would be worthy of that person anyway. 
So. That, that's the only thing you can do to get that person. That person will. That person is around right now. Yeah, exactly. They're just looking for somebody that's worth being in a relationship with. Exactly. And you're not that person right now. Yeah. Precisely. That's good.